arrivals from Albania dropped 90% because the threat of being sent back to Albania was was absolutely a deterrent. So yeah, but it's I, wrong but to say you can't address We are going to have to move on because... Um, I need are, to address that, no, that you, point. You, you, you do, know you I need to. I do. You, I you do. may feel you need <laughs> to. No, no, I don't so feel I need to. I think it's well, it's not good news um, that the numbers have uh, gone up and, and it will certainly not be good news for the Prime Minister and for his team at number 10, particularly when, you know, this is one of his priorities in stopping the boats. Um, I don't think it shows that uh, we've lost control of the issue. I think it uh, demonstrates how important it is that we that we well, the government has been able, you know, that the government should be able to implement that uh, Rwanda plan. The problem is, of course, that that hasn't happened. So these boats, uh, boat crossings, are still are still coming. That sort of deterrent has not been put in place. Um, but um, no, I mean, I, I can't, you know, I can't deny that this is this is nothing but uh, disappointing news. And clearly it's bad news for the people who are doing the crossings and putting themselves in danger and everything else. But um, there's not really much I can say positive about this, I'm afraid. But it's a real problem, isn't it? Because if you, if you have five main pledges that you tell the British public you're going to solve before the election, and he was trumpeting last year, well, crossings were a third down on the previous year, and now they're at record levels, the only pledge that he's got any hope of meeting is to cut inflation to two to near enough two percent, and yet even that people will say, well, that's Bank of England doing that, not you, Prime Minister. No, I mean, I, th I think politically it is a problem. Um, the fact that uh, he decided last year to make those five pledges. I mean, if we remember at the time, he was criticised for making five commitments that people thought were going to be easy to to meet, and that's not proved to be true. But once you make those commitments and you stand on a platform where you say, judge me on being able to deliver on my promises, <laughs> it is then incredibly difficult, clearly, politically, if that doesn't happen. So this will be something I'm sure that is... Um, hugely concerning to him and the team in Downing Street and um, but uh, you know I, I do believe however that he was right to um, uh, uh, give stopping the boats uh, the attention and the priority that he has um, I think we also have to look and acknowledge the fact that you know every time he and the government have tried to uh, implement uh, measures to tackle this, they have been blocked and thwarted at every turn. So, you know, I think it's I think it's politically difficult for him. I think that people are losing a lot of patience with this. But I think we also have to recognise that um, he has not been assisted in any way by the opposition parties. The House of Lords itself has been uh, difficult on this issue too. <coughs> well, clearly, I don't mean yeah. difficult. Their job is to revise... Well, I don't need to tell you your job, but the <laughs> job of the House of Lords is to look at a bill uh, and then make alternative scrutinise, suggestions, uh, scrutinise yeah. and, and hold is. the government to of account. Of course it is. Can and, and, that, you know, and that is... Absolutely proper, and and I believe very much uh, in the work of the House of Lords, and I firmly believe that every piece of legislation is improved by the process of scrutiny that happens in Parliament, and in particular in the House of Lords. However, there are some issues that have been um, priorities uh, for the government, particularly since um, 2019, that uh, have not met with the approval of a lot of the political class, and, uh, and that has uh, often manifested itself with a lot of obstruction and difficulty in Parliament, which has been inspired not by wanting necessarily to do the right thing, but actually to try and obstruct something which people do not agree with. I can sense Shola gagging to get in on the act. <laughs> Me? <laughs> shy, shy retiring violet, you. <laughs> I, I wanted to say that um, here's where I disagree with what you're saying. Uh, I think two things can be true. The first thing is... This shows, this record number demonstrates that it's totally out of the control of the government. And the second thing is, of course, it's not good news for the government, right? Because, again, it shows that their approach, their policy is entirely wrong. The reason Rishi Sunak put this up as one of his five pledges was to, you know, get into that whole, oh, let's address the whole anti-woke thing. Let's, let's, let, let's use all the trigger words that we know will get some people, the politically illiterate class, all going, yes, yes, yes let, let's point at the migrants. They're the problems. They're the ones trying to take our jobs. Um, they, this island is too small. All of that usual narrative. That's 
that's why he put it on there. If his policy... Because it's a problem, isn't it? Of course it's a problem, because we are not addressing it the way we, that we should. We are not addressing it the way we should. And the way we should um, address this is not by dealing and treating migrants as though, you know, by dehumanizing them. That's the wrong way. We are not trying to create safe legal routes. We are criminalizing the very people that we should be helping. We say that this, uh, that the migrants are being uh, manipulated and being exploited by these criminal gangs. Rwanda is not the answer to the criminal gangs. If anything, it, it shows that Ru- the Rwanda is not a deterrent to those who are fleeing because of, you know, because of life and, uh, you know, liberty, because they need, they feel safer. And perhaps, yes, they've got connections to this country, which is why they're coming here. So if anything, this record number in the last three or four months, in 2024 alone, should be, should be a, I don't know, a huge message to Rishi Sunak and Tory party. You're your policy is wrong. Your approach okay, well, is wrong. What's the right approach? What's the right policy? If, if you were Home Secretary, and I've got to imagine that. Oh, um, God. I'll turn this, you this country upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first thing to do, I think, is we have to look for where we can create safer legal routes. People should not have to come here to apply for asylum. And if we have better arrangements with our neighboring countries, including France, where these applications can be made, and the, the country of origin, where people either from their current country of origin or neighboring countries can apply for asylum, that would be a step in the right direction. Two, we need to listen to those who are actually working with these migrants on the ground, who are seeing the real issues and the real problems. And wherever, wherever it is that we as a country, the United Kingdom, has contributed to de, you know, to destabilizing the country of origin they're coming from, we need to recognize that we probably hold some kind of responsibility somehow. And the third thing is, we can't be applying double standards. We can't go, oh, Ukraine, come in open ha- ha- you know, arms, and somebody else fleeing another war-torn country simply because they are not white and don't come from a European country well, we need to have rules and we need to have all of these barriers. People see that, people respond to that. But on top of this is Rwanda, the reason Rwanda is not working is not because of the House of Lords. It's not because of the opposition party. It's because it is wrong, pure and simple. And the, the more Rishi Sunak tries to push or flog a dead horse, so to speak, the more he's going to fail. It's not okay. stopping people from coming over. Right. Um, Sarah, of of the solutions that Shola outlined there, what do you disagree with? Um, Not a huge amount, to be honest. I mean, the Liberal Democrats have... (laughs) (laughs) I might might expand that on that, if you don't mind. Um, But, uh, uh, you know, the Liberal Democrats have always said that what we need to really resolve the problem of small boats is safe and legal routes. Exactly as Shola's just said, there needs to be an option for refugees to be able to apply for asylum um, from from other countries. They shouldn't have to come here. And that would solve the problem much, much quicker than this crazy Rwanda plan would. Um, and, uh, you, you know, so, so that's really at the heart of it. I mean, I think the other thing that we think would really make a difference, we want to see the government, uh, you know, stick to its commitment of restoring uh, the international aid budget at 0.7% of GDP, because then we could be much more influential uh, on the ground in some of these countries where, you know, the disruption and the, uh, you know, people well, are being Unsettled. more than virtually any other country. Nevertheless, you think about that, you know, the, the difference we could make to stop people needing to flee their home countries in the first place. Um, so, uh, you know, it is about the, the, the safe and legal routes, but I just want to pick up on what Tina was saying there about the House of Lords. I find it extraordinary that she's being disdainful about the political class, as if she herself, a former leader of the House of Lords, is not a part of that class. Oh, I am and of course, of, you. yes, of course but, of, but what you're saying that they are the ones who are stopping this. <laughs> but I mean, of course the Lords are going to be opposed to a piece of legislation that breaks international law. What do you mm. expect them to do? It's ridiculous to claim that it's somehow being blocked, that the opposition is, you know, it, it's somehow uh, wrong to oppose this legislation. I, I mean, the, what the fundamental point about this is that there is absolutely no proof that this Rwanda legislation will have a deterrent effect, which is what the government are relying upon. But and I think, I think it's you just need to see that, as we have done, that the number of people still coming across in small boats, not a single person is being deterred by this. It's not working. It's it's fiendishly expensive. It breaks international law. The government need to try a new approach. But the, but the point is on the topic of illegal immigration, because I, I, I think it's wrong to assume that everybody who is trying to get here 
uh, via uh, these channel crossings is an asylum seeker. I mean, that, that's... Of course, but they could yeah, apply but, from other but, countries and then but, we would, they but, wouldn't need to make the, the point, crossing before the we made is, that determination. The issue of illegal immigration is an important one to the vast majority of the people in this country. And I'm sorry, I find it quite offensive that Shola would describe them as politically illiterate. It's correct. This is, this is the... the, the but, that, but that is precisely leads to my next point, which is this is a serious topic, mm -hmm. okay? It is the job of any government to protect their national borders, okay? It's what they're people failing. expect. They're not taking it seriously. It's what people expect. And when this was this emerged as a real priority for um, people, starting, you know, sort of very much an issue back from 2016 and has, has grown in importance. The reason why it's grown in importance and the re reason why people have become increasingly angry and the, and, and the House of Lords has found it difficult uh, to be able to discharge its responsibilities in a way that that gives the public confidence that they're doing so in a way that is in the public interest is because they started, too many of us started from a place which was one of distaste for what it was people wanted to see That's done. That's not Right, let's go to Charlotte. We haven't heard from Charlotte yet. I, I mean, I do agree. I think it's unhelpful to refer to a whole group of people that are concerned by this as politically illiterate class. I do think that's problematic. Um, and, and I think we should be, we should recognise that um, a nation uh, should be able to make its own decisions about who is coming in and who is not. And there has to be a degree of public consent in that. And it's perfectly legitimate, therefore, to want to have a system which may restrict uh, people coming in. I think um, where, where I'm sort of slightly, I suppose, um, baffled by how the Rwanda thing has become so massive in the context of uh, dealing with illegal immigration, given there's a whole set of actions that government is taking, including uh, a great deal of activity targeting the gangs at source to try and disrupt uh, these horrendous people smugglers that are, are risking people's lives. I think it's odd that the Prime Minister has staked so much on, on this one policy when actually, um, I mean, as you said, Ian, uh, yes, the numbers have gone up in the first quarter. We'll have to see how that settles. There are lots but of reasons. But don't you think but Shola's got a point there, that it's designed to appeal? And, and you may object to the way that Shola put it, and I mean, I do, it, it, in a sense, because even the politically illiterate have a, have a voice. But, but it's, it's designed true. to appeal to a certain demographic. Uh, uh, so if you're saying it's designed to appeal to a set of people who are concerned by illegal immigration, absolutely. People I agree with just you. Concerned. It is designed to appeal to people who are concerned by that. And there are a great number, as Tina said, of people who are are concerned. My issue with so my, my issue with Rwanda is it's just it, it's it, it's the most wonderful example of the sunk cost fallacy, right? So you know we've spent so much time and money and energy, but if we just do a bit more time and money and energy, we'll make it succeed. Like but it's good. It, well, I mean we might disagree on that, Ian. I think, but, but let's part that. But what I what I do think is is. Um, uh, where I would slightly disagree is actually we don't know that it isn't a deterrent because it's totally bogged down. And actually, if you look at the deal, we do know by, it isn't a deterrent because only two hundred people are ever going to go in, in a in a year long period. But actually, so until what, what you, kind of until you can, that? until so it, so I agree that that if it remains as that 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 would be the case. And Although, if you said all 44,000 people who come across the channel every year are going to go to Rwanda, that's a deterrent. But of course it's not possible. But, you, but, but we don't even, know that the numbers will increase. And also you don't know if you'll be in the 200 that goes across. Well, we have no, we've had what, no flights if leaving. I, if I was on the coast of Cal uh, at Calais and thought I had a 200 in 44,000 chance <laughs> of going to Rwanda, <laughs> I think I'd probably risk it. And if that, that number from 200 increases and actually that more well, people... You oh, make, but you know, you it's millions, millions. millions. Millions of pounds have already Albanian been spent deal. on an entirely unproven concept. I, it's not, but, but, you know, but, sorry, good value I, I, for money. I agreed with you. I think it's a lot of money that's mm. been sunk in, and I don't think it's going to get to the point of working. So in that, mm. but I think it's wrong to say it couldn't be a deterrent. If you look at the Albanian deal, the, the arrivals from Albania dropped 90% because the threat of being sent back to Albania was was absolutely a deterrent. So yeah, but it's I wrong to say you want We are going to have to move on because... Um, I need are, to address that, no, that you, point. You, 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 you know I need to. I do. You, you I do. may feel you need to. <laughs> I don't but feel I need to. I think it's important to. I'm going to move on to go to a break because it's 8.17.